awful way to die. Sorry you had to come way out here just to verify the obvious, Doc, but rules is rules. Yeah. Okay, EJ's all yours. Come on, you crackers, let's get back to work. Come on, boys, let's go. So how'd it happen, Buck? Kid told me he was a mechanic. So I bring him out here, tell him to figure out why this tractor keeps stalling out. He fires her up, and the next thing I know, he's caught in the disc blades. Well, couldn't you help him? I was climbing back into my pickup. By the time I realized what was happening, it was too late. Who the hell are you? I'm Ben Matlock. I just gave that boy a ride out here. He seemed so excited about working here, and he seemed to know so much about farm equipment, I just can't believe this happened. Well, you got no cause blaming me. I'm not blaming you, it's just Okay, that... okay, calm down, Buck. We're all a little shook up. Now, did anybody else see the accident? Yeah, one of the farmhands, Lester. He was up in the cab. In the cab? Couldn't he have turned the damn thing off? It happened too fast. Look, mister, this is a private farm, and since I'm its foreman and you ain't got no business being here, why don't you just get... Buck, take it easy. You think I like seeing a man get chewed up like that? Just trying to find out what happened. We all are, Mr... Matlock, Ben Matlock. But you're kind of interfering with my investigation here, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to move on. I, I brought these to give to Ramon. He left them in my car. Family pictures, huh? I'll send him back to El Salvador with the rest of his effects. The dress was in his wallet. Why don't you keep him with him? I'm sure he would have wanted it that way. Yeah. Okay. Hey. EJ. Excuse me. I couldn't help but over here. Are you Ben Matlock, the lawyer? Retired lawyer. What an honor. Hal Matthews. You're, you're a doctor, huh? Well, not a doctor, the doctor. If I ever retired, I don't know what folks around here would do. I do everything from pulling teeth to delivering puppies. But what on earth brings you to Oak Creek? Not that I'm complaining, mind you. I'm on my way to Abbotsville to do some fishing. Oh, I envy you. I hear they're biting so well this year, you don't even need bait. Yeah? Fact is, I know a great motel up there, Sundown Lodge. Owner's a friend of mine. Be glad to give him a call and tell him you're coming. Well, thanks. I don't feel like doing any more driving today. Is there, is there a good motel here in Oak Creek? Well, let me put it this way. There's only one motel in Oak Creek. It ain't the Ritz. You change your mind, just let me know. I'm in the book. Thanks. Well, you should be. Someone did that to my cousin Esther once, and she's been stuttering ever since. I just wondered if you'd heard anything from Ben. Oh, not a peep. Do you have any idea where he went? No, I don't. But I do know one thing. A man his age, out on his own, well, it's just not healthy. I remember when my Uncle Clive went out on his... Did I tell you about my Uncle Clive? Well, I'm not well. sure. Uncle Clive didn't have it quite all together when he was home, much less than he was on his own. Now, one time, he went to New Orleans by himself, and he ate one peck of raw oysters and two dozen chocolate-covered donuts in one sitting, fell in love with a hoochie-coochie dancer, and died. Oh. Strain was too much for him, don't you see? I see that. Well, wherever Mr. Matlock is, I hope there's no hoochie-coochie dancers. I hope so. Oh, they too. can be an awful strain on a man his age. Yes, listen. If he calls, you'll let me know right away, won't Oh, you? yes, the poor defenseless thing. Sure hope he doesn't go like Uncle Clive. Yes. I lit a candle for him. Light one for me.
I'd, I'd like a room. Well, you need to fill out this form, and I need to see a major credit card. Yeah, yeah. 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 How long are you staying? One night. Uh, uh, two, if there's a good place to eat. You'll just be staying the one. The charge is $40 a night. Uh, you won't need more than one bar of soap, will you? No, I guess not. Follow me, it's right over here. Right. You own this place? Me in the bank, yep. <laughs> What about your husband? I noticed you wear a ring. My husband had a stroke two years ago. He's in a home over in Montgomery. There you go. Mm. Appreciate it if you took short showers and keep the lights off when you're not using them. Where's the bed? You see that strap? Give her a pull. If you need anything else, just dial zero. I'll pick up eventually. Evening. Ben Matlock, I saw you out at the farm today. Yeah, I'm out at the farm out there every day. Zachariah Turnenbaum, just call me Zach. Oh, Zach. You work out there? Well, I have been for the last 10 years, ever since they foreclosed on my property outside the bakery. 300 acres of bottom line. Now it's just one big subdivision. What's good, Zach? Well, chicken fried steak ain't bad. And the meatloaf, neither. As long as it's not more than three days old. I'll have chicken fried steak. That was a terrible thing that happened out there. Farming is a dangerous profession. There ain't no place for amateurs. Did you see the accident? I was putting hay up in the barn. First I heard of it was when Mr. Rahal came roaring in to call the doc. Mr. Rahal? Full. Buck Rahal. Evening, Mr. Matlock. Good evening. Hello, Zach. Joan? Don't tell me you decided to spend the night. Well, like I say, I'm not exactly on a tight schedule. How's me, little Ed? Maybe yesterday. That's what I'll have then. Well, early to bed, early to rise. I don't pie it too bad either if you don't mind chewing on the crust a while. Uh, Take it easy. You too. Doc Matthews tells me you're on your way to Abbotsville to do some fishing. Yeah. Is there going to be a funeral, you know, for Raymond? I'm having his body shipped back to El Salvador so he can be buried there. That's very nice of you. Well, it's the least I could do. Such a tragedy. Farming's a dangerous profession. That's just what Zach said. One chicken fried steak and one meatloaf.
Something wrong with your dinner? Oh, I guess I'm just not used to that much gravy. Order something else, then, and tell him to hold the gravy. No, that, I'm, that's okay. I'm full. I heard Ed's feelings. You don't have a piece of pie. Oh, I can't. <laughs> no. Hmm. That's a nice time of the year for a vacation. Uh, I'm retired, Mr. Jones, and so far, there's been no vacation. Nice to see you. if you towed that truck in yet. You know, the one that belonged to Ramon Comaneras. You know, the boy that was killed in the accident today. I thought he'd come into town with you. Well, he hits to ride with me because his truck broke down. I thought maybe you could, you know, maybe sell it and send the money to his family in El Salvador. I don't know nothing about it. Hmm. Well, maybe the other fellow that works here towed it in. Ernie don't drive the tow truck, I do. He says it's because the air conditioning don't work no more. He didn't mention it to you? Nope. Maybe he's busy. Just between you and me, mister, Ernie don't know the meaning of the word busy. Huh. Well, thanks anyway. One, two... Matlock. I'm afraid I misplaced that registration card you filled out today. Could I trouble you to come in now and fill out a new one? Sure. Insurance company's real strict about such things. <laughs> Nothing. Just some fishing gear and clothes. And me sneaking around in there like a fool. Oh, I told you. Ben Matlock's a lawyer. Not some kind of federal agent. Then why was he asking so many damn questions out there today? Well, I'm not crazy about him being here either, Buck. But I'm inclined to believe it's just an unfortunate coincidence. So, I suggest we all relax. Come morning, he'll get up, eat some of Ed's Teflon pancakes, pack his things and... Be out of our hair for good. I'm telling you, somebody was in my room last night. Just because you found a smudge on your undershirt? This undershirt was perfectly clean yesterday. When Ms. McCarla washes my undershirts, they're clean. Who are you accusing? Me? All I'm saying is there's something about this town and that boy's death yesterday that just plain don't feel right. And now that somebody's drugged my undershirt into it, I'm going to find out why. I went in my room last night and I smelled something funny, like cigar smoke. And when I saw that smudge on my undershirt, I knew somebody had been in my room. You don't smoke, do you? No, I don't, Sheriff. And your hands ain't particularly dirty. 
I didn't say it was her, it was somebody. And they didn't take anything, they just went through your stuff? Yes, while I was over at Ed's trying to eat. Now, Mr. Matlock, you have to admit you don't exactly have an open and shut case. Somebody was in my room. I can't exactly go arresting anybody now, can Somebody I? was in my room. The doc tells me you just retired. Yeah, but somebody was in my room. Why don't you just relax and enjoy retirement? That boy that was killed, his truck broke down on the highway. That's how come I gave him a lift into town. He made arrangements with that fat fella at the gas station. Ernie. Yeah, he made arrangements with him to tow his truck into town. He never did. Hmm. Don't you think that's a little strange? Ernie probably forgot. He does that with irritating frequency. Mr. Matlock, I was due over to Lowell half an hour ago. Why don't you get some breakfast? Maybe things will look different after some of Ed's gravy and eggs. May I help you? I was wondering if if you could tell me uh, something about the, the young man who was killed in that accident yesterday, Ramon Comaneris. I happen to be working on him even as we speak. Working on him? You know, preparing him for shipment. Believe me, it's going to take me all day and then some. What can I do you for? Did, did you notice anything unusual about the, the body? You mean other than the fact that it was mangled so bad I had to get out an anatomy book to make sure I got everything facing in the right direction? Okay, dumb question. Uh, when when is, is he going back to El, El Salvador? Well, I'm sure EJ has it written down here somewhere. Well, I... uh, sorry, Paulie, something's come up. I'll have to call you back. Matt Locke's at the funeral parlor. EJ's gone, and that idiot who works for him's there. He just might say something. For God's sakes, why didn't you call me? Been on the phone. Ramon will be shipping out on the 24th, this Thursday. Excuse me for a second. undertaking. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, I forgot. It's against policy to release any information concerning one of our customers, unless you're a blood relative. That's okay, I understand. Thanks for your time. I went to the undertakers, and I discovered something I think you ought to know about. Ramon didn't die till yesterday, but arrangements to ship his body back... I'm afraid I just don't have time for this right now, Mr. Matlock. But this is important, Sheriff. I think Ramon was murdered. I can't get away right now. If you want to talk, you're going to have to come out here. Where are you? Head down the highway towards Lowell, then turn left on Reservoir Road. I'm at the Simpson farm about five miles down on the right. Give me ten minutes. Much obliged. You're welcome. <laughs> 